It's time for member statements. The member for Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. In my riding, we have a very special place that does wonderful work with some of our most fantastic children. Grandview Children's Centre works with children with special needs and gives them the best chance to reach their full potential. They started humbly 65 years ago with a small number of families requesting services and have grown to serve 10,000 families with kids who depend on Grandview's services and supports. Every day across Grandview's six locations throughout Durham Region, over 330 families arrive for appointments. 65,000 appointments for urgently needed pediatric rehabilitation, physio, occupational therapy, speech-language pathology, specialist medical care and clinics, audiology, therapeutic recreation, and family support services. Kids with physical, communication, and developmental needs depend on Grandview being there as the only pediatric rehabilitation center in Durham and Grandview is also the regional provider for autism services. Grandview helps so many families, but has an ever-increasing waitlist of over 3,000 kids and has outgrown the facility that is in my riding of Oshawa. I was excited to recently join Grandview and supporters to launch their Believe campaign. The province has committed $31 million, and the Grandview Children's Foundation is currently raising $20 million through the campaign to be able to build and move to their new home in Ajax. The Grandview Children's Foundation has launched the Believe campaign. I met eight-year-old Tegan and many of the special children who are Grandview's ambassadors, and they and all children deserve the world. I encourage everyone to believe and be a part of making dreams come true and empowering our children to realize their full potential. Get involved. Visit Grandview, grandviewkidsbelieve.ca. We believe we believe in a new Grandview. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In honour of Waste Reduction Week, I would like to share a new program that has been implemented in Perry Sound, Muskoka, to help reduce waste going to landfill. I'm proud that the District of Muskoka has partnered with Ontario Mattress Recyclers in Barrie to help provide residents with an environmentally conscious way to dispose of used mattresses. Mattresses take up an enormous amount of space in landfills. For properly sorted and disassembled, 95% of discarded mattresses can be transformed into new products. The project began as a three-month pilot project to provide services from the Barrie-based company to Muskoka residents. Since the project was launched, approximately 600 mattresses have been repurposed instead of ending up in Muskoka's only remaining landfill. I commend Muskoka councillors for making this program permanent starting in 2019. This should divert 10,000 to 12,000 mattresses annually and extend the life of the Rose Warren landfill by more than three years. The district projects the program will break even financially with residents paying a tipping fee of $26 per mattress to help cover the cost of increased staff time and the $16 per mattress the district pays to Ontario mattress recyclers. This program is an example of Muskoka's dedication to environmental conservation and sustainability. The program will continue to increase the municipality's waste diversion rate and provide more value for taxpayers on the existing landfill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Speaker, do you know what the community of Chapleau, Thessalon, Warncliffe, Manitouage, Wawa, Goulet River, Searchmont, the residents of Downey Creek and Harmony Beach have in common? Yes. Climate change. They just felt the wrath of Mother Nature, and Mother Nature decided to pour and rain and release waters for an ex over, over an excessive period of time, which resulted in road closures, flooding. Uh, I was out in Goulet River over the uh, over my constituency week looking at individuals and shout out to the uh, crews from the uh, search and rescue team who went out and rescued these people out of their homes who had roughly about three to four feet of water through them. Um, it is gut-wrenching to seeing those struggles of those individuals and it is, it is disheartening to seeing them losing their homes. However, what I am really frustrated about is when some of these incidents are, are, are preventable. On Highway 614 into Manitowage, there was a culvert that had been identified at faulty over the course of the summer. There was a dip in the culvert. The decision makers of the day decided to put a log through it, clear the passage, and put some coal patch over top of it. But guess what? The heavy rains washed in, brought in the debris, blocked it, and we have a washed out road. This is something that is completely preventable, preventable, and it's not just an isolated event. It's happened year after year in Northern Ontario. We're not asking for anything more in Northern Ontario, but we sure as hell won't accept anything less. And we want our roads to be a priority as well. 
Member Statements. The member for Ottawa West Nepean. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last Friday evening, I attended an event in my riding in which 500 revelers were gathered, sharing a beer and a few laughs. But this was not a normal party. It wasn't a wedding or a fundraiser. It was a funeral. All of these people were gathered to celebrate the life of Neil Tweedell, who passed away suddenly last week at the age of 57. The day Neil died happened to be the 20th anniversary of the business that he and his brothers had built, Tweedell Sewer and Water. Neil was immensely proud of the company. They employed 20 to 25 workers across Ottawa every year. He was particularly proud that in 2007, his team was brought on for the emergency replacement of a water main that had burst at Parliament Hill. Within the industry, the Tweedell name has become synonymous with reliability, quality, and hard work. Neil loved his family above all else. His children, Lana, Caleb, and Brittany, have each grown into impressive young men and women. I was awed by the speeches that Lana and Caleb delivered on Friday. Instead of despair, they each showed through their courage and thoughtful words that Neil's legacy would continue to be celebrated for years to come. On a personal note, Mr. Speaker, Neil's passing is a tremendous loss for my family. Neil was one of my father's best friends from the day they first met in kindergarten at City View Public School. I will always remember Neil coming in and out of my campaign office with an armful of lawn signs and stakes. His efforts helped put me here today. Neil, I know that your memory will continue to bring a smile to many for many years to come. Thank you for all you did. Thank you very much. The member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. October is Autism Awareness and Acceptance Month, a time to reflect and commit to the work that ensures families and individuals living with autism have the support and services they need to not only reach their full potential, but for some to merely survive. Stephen Franchella is 35 years old. He has very limited verbal skills and lives at home with his parents, Frank and Maureen. For five years, Stephen did live in a group home, but they weren't able to manage his needs, so he returned home 10 years ago. Stephen is usually very calm, happy, loving, and easy to get along with, but he has occasional bouts of violence and self-injury, and they have increased dramatically over the past year. Mom now has PTSD and not able to manage Stephen and is fearful for his uncontrollable outbursts. He has been in the West Fifth Emergency Mental Health Unit since mid-September, in a locked ward, and receives 24-hour care. But that overnight care for Stephen is about to be cut. That means there will no one be to be there with him during the evening hours. His parents are extremely concerned and worried about Stephen's future. The family is no longer able to care for him and ensure that his needs are met. He is on wait lists for, inter for behavior intervention and, house and housing. These are not the things that we should be providing to, our, to the people in our communities. People in our communities need the help to ensure that they can live fulfilling lives and that they can care for their loved ones. Hopefully, this government will step up to the plate. Member statements. The member for Ottawa Vanier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House to discuss the opioid crisis. Since 2003, the number of opioid-related deaths has increased 246 percent in Ontario. In 2017, more than 1,200 Ontarians died from opioid-related causes. In Ottawa, the rate of opioid-related deaths is 4.1 per 100,000 people. Every death is a tragedy. I had the occasion of attending a very moving memorial services for all the people who died from opioid-related uh, deaths in my riding. 
And I have to say, I was quite moved by the way in which uh, everybody was getting together and trying to support each other. Now, Speaker, the evidence is uh, in on safe injection sites, and it is unacceptable to delay any further. I had the occasion to visit the sites in, in the riding of Ottawa Vanier. They work well. People are getting the services that they need. It's a pathway to getting services. It's time to act, Mr. Speaker. We have to act before there's other deaths that touch Ottawa Vanier and the whole province of Ontario. This government is in place for four months. It's time to act and to stop uh, hesitating. I had the occasion to see with my own eyes how it functions and helps people. It's important to not let these people abandon and our obligations towards people whose life is at risk. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week, leaders from around the world gathered in Yerevan, Armenia for the 2018 Le Francophonie Summit. This was the first international gathering of Francophonie leaders, allowing them to experience Armenian hospitality. Mr. Speaker, on that same note, September 21st, Around the world and in Canada, Armenians celebrated the 27th anniversary of the inception of the Third Republic. Canada has had a long and historic relationship with Armenia and Armenians. Canada was one of the first countries around the world to recognize this important day and provided immediate assistance to the newly established Republic to overcome the challenges left behind by 70 years of Soviet rule. The first Armenian students, merchants, and agriculturists started arriving in Ontario 150 years ago. In 1920, Ontario and Canada were the pioneers in initiating the first worldwide humanitarian mission to save some of the orphans survivors of the Armenian genocide. They provided shelter and safe heaven to over 100 boys and gave them a new lease on life. At that time, this mission was called Canada's Noble Experiment. Many Ontario Armenians became trailblazers in elevating and enhancing Canada's image around the world. Movie director Ato Megoyan, photographer Yusuf Karsh, and former Ontario Information Privacy Commissioner Anne Kavukian are among many who have made great contribution to Ontario. I am confident that under the leadership of our Premier Doug Ford and the relationship between Canada and Ontario will be intertwined. I believe that economic free trade agreement between Ontario and Armenia will further strengthen the bonds between our two countries. Thank you very much. Member Statements. Member for Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, on July 22nd of this year, there was a terrible and tragic shooting on the Danforth in my riding. Two people were killed, 13 were injured. In the aftermath, people across Ontario, people across Toronto, reached out to my community, gave them support, condolences, and that is deeply appreciated. At the time, I had the opportunity in this House to rise and speak to my community, speak to Ontario about that tragedy and offer condolences and support. Some of my constituents recently contacted me to say that the family of the shooter was also deeply, deeply affected. They had nothing to do with what happened, but yet their lives were totally disrupted. And unfortunately, at the time that I spoke in the House previously, I didn't speak about their plight, their difficulties. And I wish to acknowledge today that they went through tremendous pain and deserve the support and care of the community. Speaker, many families struggle with a member who has severe problems with mental illness. And families tell me the huge difficulties they go through trying to access care and support, which is part of the reason we've been very worried, very upset about cuts to promised investment in mental health care, because we know that families face these impossible situations. For the sake of those families and to prevent future tragedies, we need to invest in mental health care. We need to look after the people of this province. Thank you.
Member statements. The member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Mr. Speaker, today I would like to draw our attention to the parish of St. Charbel, Maronite Catholic Church in the great city of Mississauga. Led by Father Charbel, the Maronite Catholics came together and built a new home for their community. The past Sunday was the patriarch of their church, His Eminence, Mari Bishara Botros El Rai, in attendance. The new church hosted its first mass, and the community blessed their altar. I had the pleasure of attending, and through, and though it's not my first time celebrating with the community, I'm always impressed by the love and care they have for each other. Be it the San Charbel Lebanese Heritage Festival in July, or the Festival of St. Mary in September, or the elevation of the cross just a few weeks ago, St. Charbel Parish welcomed the broader Mississauga community and all Ontarians to celebrate their faith and their culture. The new St. Charbel Church is a physical example of love, and like their love, it will stand the test of time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Burlington. Friday, I had the honour of attending the 38th Annual Volunteer Firefighters Recognition and Appreciation Awards. It was truly an extraordinary occasion, and I was honoured to play a small part by bringing greetings from the Government of Ontario and sitting with our extraordinary Fire Chief, Dave Lazenby. We all recognize that volunteers have a long and venerable history as the foundation of strong communities. We know that to be true, Speaker. From healthcare navigators and hospital volunteers to food banks from community outreach volunteers and big brothers to girl guides and on and on, Speaker. Every single volunteer contributes to making the world a better place from one person and at a time. I am so happy that volunteerism today is very much in style. But in the world of firefighting, volunteering has long been a way of life. Today and every day, for well over 100 years, Speaker, the volunteer firefighters in Burlington and across rural and small town Ontario have given their all to help others in desperate need. Volunteers are the only protection and source of security against the devastation of fire in so many parts of our province. On Friday, October 12th, we celebrated the bravest, the strongest, the gentlest and the most relied upon of volunteers, Speaker. The men and women we honoured the volunteers who have been firefighting for 10, 25, even 40 years have been, in, have been a literal lifeline for victims, for survivors, when their world was on the brink of destruction or worse. For five years of service, Speaker, we recognize Matthew Fidel, Zahari Ganichev, Jim Patterson and Brian Yacht. For 10 years, we congratulated Peter Carnes. For 15 years, Peter Olescu. For 20 years, we recognized John Robertson, and for 25 years, we honor Lynn Powell and Kevin Ruddy, and for 40 years' commitment, we congratulate Jeff Swantz. Thankfully, most people will never, vo never, volunteer, will never need volunteer fire services, but we are all grateful beyond words to know that should there be need, they will be there for us, Speaker. I know all members in this House share with me in congratulating these courageous men and women on their commitment and years of selfless dedication to volunteer firefighting in Burlington. They have contributed greatly to making the world a better place. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Report.